hey guys welcome back to maxim automation today in this video i'm going to discuss selenium grid components in detail we have already discussed what is selenium grid if you have not watched that video then i would suggest going through that video first you can find the link in the description and in the card button above now let's move to today's topic which is selenium components you can see in the diagram these are all selenium grid components as most of you might already know that the latest version of selenium grid available is version 4 grid 4 is rewritten to improve the performance the major reason for the rewrite is to support containerization and cloud distributed scalability so we can say that selenium grid 4 is a suitable solution for the modern age earlier we could set up the selenium grid in standalone mode only but now with the grid 4 we can set up it in distributed mode as well so we'll discuss all these modes in a separate session now let's move back to the grid components the very first component is router router is the entry point of selenium grid when we execute our web driver script then the web driver client creates a connection with the selenium grid or we can say the hub of the selenium grid all the requests which are coming from the web driver client falls to this router then the responsibility of this router is to receive all external requests and route them to the correct component for example if a router receives a request for a new session then this request will be forwarded to this session queue but if the received request wants to connect with an already existing session then the role of the router is to forward the request to the node where the existing session is already running now the question is how the router locates the correct node or how it identifies that the received request belongs to which node so basically what happens is when a request is received then the router identifies whether this request is for an existing session or not now the question is how does the router identify that the current request is for a new session or for an existing session so when there is a request for an existing session then we'll have the session id also embedded in the request and when the router finds the session id in the request then it identifies that this request needs to be routed to the node where the existing session is running and when we don't have the session id in the original request then router identifies that it need to create a new session so whenever the request is for an existing session then the router connects with the session map and makes a query to the session map to get the node id where the session is running and then based on that node id the request will be routed directly to the node so the session map is another component of the grid and the session map is nothing but a data storage which stores the information for a session id based on the session id we can retrieve the node id where that particular session is running it stores the mapping of the session and node id that is why whenever there is a request for an existing session then router asks the session map to return the node associated with the session id and then forwards the request to the correct node so the router plays the role of the load balancer in the grid it sends the request to the correct component without overloading a single component now we know that if we have a request for an existing session then the router will forward this request directly to the node but let's see when the request is for a new session then how it works 
So whenever there is a request for a new session, then the router places the request in the new session queue. Again, this new session queue is nothing but another data storage which stores the session request. And the data are stored in the form of first in, first out order. Other than new session request, it also stores the configuration parameters like request timeout and request retry interval. So if a new session request does not fulfill in the given time, then it throws the timeout exception and removes the session request from the queue. Now, once the requests are placed in the new session queue, then it is the responsibility of the distributor to check the session queue to see if there are any pending requests for a new session. And if it finds a new request waiting in the queue, then it looks for a node where the requested session can be created. It not only creates a new session on a node, but also keeps the information of the node and its capabilities. Let's say if a request is to create a session on Chrome browser, then distributor not only finds the free node, but also make sure that all capabilities of a request are being catered. Let's say if there is a new session request on Chrome browser and there is a single node available, but that node doesn't have Chrome instances attached with it. In that case, distributor won't forward the request to the available node to create the session but it will wait until an appropriate node is found where a Chrome browser instance is attached with the node. Once the session is created, then the distributor stores the information in the session map, which basically stores the mapping of session ID and node where the session is running. And we know that this information is used by the router to route the request to the correct node in case of an existing session request. All nodes in the grids are registered with the distributor. Nodes sends a registration event to the event bus. And then this bus is read by the distributor and then based on the information available of a node in the event bus, distributor tries to connect to the node to make sure the node is reachable. And if node is not reachable, then it throws the node unreachable exception. But if it successfully connects with the node, then the distributor registers the node and stores all the information of nodes, including the node capabilities. So the major responsibility of the distributor is to regularly check for a free node. And once available, then it picks the first matching request from the session queue and then distributor creates a new session. But if there is no node available or all nodes are occupied, then the distributor will send the request back to the queue. And if the request times out after retrying, then the request will be rejected. So this is how distributor works. Now, if I talk about node, then node is nothing but a server where multiple instances of browsers are running. Node is a machine or server where the test scripts actually run. Nodes are connected with the distributor. So when the distributor receives a new session request, then it forwards the request to the appropriate node. Also, requests can come directly from the router when the request is for an existing session. We can create nodes based on different browser types, browser versions, and operating systems. We can have multiple nodes in a grid, and each node has their capabilities of how many types of browser it supports and how many instances of each browser it supports. The node registers to the distributor through the event bus, and the configuration of the node is sent as part of the registration in the form of node.json. When we register a node, 
then we provide a JSON file where we describe node capabilities. And this information is passed to the distributor as part of a registration process. When we register a node, then we also need to provide the path of the browser driver binaries. If not provided, then by default, it will pick from the path variable. So the role of the node is to run the test on the browsers. We can create multiple nodes to support cross-browser and cross-platform testing. We can attach any machine as a node irrespective of its operating system. We can have Mac, Linux or Windows machines added as a node in a single Selenium grid. After that, we are left with this component called as event bus. This bus is used as a communication medium between nodes, distributor, new session queue, and session map. Grid uses the event bus for its internal communication. When we set up the grid in distributed mode, then the event bus is the first component that should be started so that grid can communicate with all the components using this event bus. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you like this video. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.